I think parking is important because the, 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 the average car is parked 95% of the time. And in an audience this large, some of you were probably even conceived in a parked car. Uh, well, too much of the United States looks like this view of, of Silicon Valley. Um, and we tend to ignore this asphalt blight when we're parked free in it, as all these cars are. But parking is free to us only in our role as a driver, because we pay for it in every other aspect of our lives, whether you're uh, a, a tenant, an investor, or a homeowner, or a taxpayer. Somebody has to pay for that parking. And it's everybody except the driver. And this pattern just continues everywhere throughout Silicon Valley. Because that's what the city of San Jose, where this is, that's what the city requires. Um, here is the uh, parking requirements for, for San Jose. I just uh, converted them into the size of the parking lot for 1,000 square foot of the, of the building. The green is the building and the red is the size of the parking lot. Um, so for a restaurant, the parking lot is eight times the size uh, of the restaurant itself. Um, and you wonder, where do these parking requirements come from? Uh, here are Louisville's parking requirements. Um, uh, you certainly want everybody to drive to a tavern, don't you? Uh, um, uh, uh, maybe you hope that everyone in your fraternal club will come to your funeral. Um, Louisville uh, uh, does uh, exempt the downtown from parking requirements, but these apply everywhere else in the city. And like every city's parking requirements, they look scientific, as though planners must really know something. This goes on for 10 pages of the zoning code. How could that have been legislated without somebody knowing exactly how many parking spaces are needed everywhere? Uh, but I suspect that no planner in Louisville or any other city could rationally explain the origin of these numbers. Um, um, well, there are two different views of parking requirements. The uh, uh, conventional planner's parking requirements, this was from 1944, and the city of Los Angeles, or the county, had had understood at that time that you really have to have as much parking as there is building. There's as much space for cars as there is for people. Um, but there's a new view of this. Um, and that comes from the Congress of New Urbanism. Um, and I think that most of you probably subscribe to the new view. Uh, but even, even in the uh, in the new view, there are still parking requirements. Here's from the, um, uh, from the smart code. Um, uh, and conventional Euclidean zoning says that the size of the building determines the amount of required parking. But the smart code turns it on its head and says that the amount of parking determines the allowable size of the building. Um, and the parking requirements or not, they're certainly lower than conventional requirements, but they're still there. Um, uh, the smart code requires three pace, spaces per thousand square feet of retail, um, and this is the only limit on the allowed floor area. And they're not low for a city center. Say, Louisville has no parking requirements the center. So in some ways, the, the smart code's parking requirements are higher than in many other cities in their downtown. Uh, but they're lower than, than, than they are in, in the rest of the city. Well, uh, where do planners get these, these, these numbers? Um, they come from the, uh, 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 a book called Parking Standards. This is the first page of eight pages of, of, uh, uh, of parking requirements. The book is called Parking Standards. Uh, is though standards are certainly, they must be a good thing, but the report says nothing about standards. It doesn't say what parking requirements should be. It just said this is what the parking requirements are in other cities if you want to copy those parking requirements. Um, so there are uh, 700 uh, different land uses because every land use has to have its own parking requirement. 